Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we will be going through the 2005 movie, House of Wax. It's time to recall, let's get started, turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. It all starts in 1974 with Trudy Sinclair, a well-known wax sculptor. She is melting some wax and putting it in a mold shaped like a face. Nearby, her kid eats breakfast in his high chair. The father and another boy who is kicking around in his father's arms and is shortly strapped into a high chair interrupt them. He kicks the table, knocking her sculpture on the ground, and then scratches his mother's hand. She puts a stop to the ruckus by hitting the misbehaving kid in the face, and he is also negatively compared to his brother. The kid's wrists are also shown, and they seem to have cuts on them from all the times he has been taped to the same chair. Now is the present. Six children are on their way to a much-anticipated football match. Carly Jones is a young woman with big dreams who wants to relocate to New York. Wade, her lover, is a small-town kid who is apprehensive about going to the big metropolis. Carly's friend Paige Edwards joins them on their trip, and she may be pregnant with her boyfriend Blake's kid, but she hasn't informed him yet. She walks to her boyfriend's car and seems annoyed by his obsession with his new vehicle, but as she is about to leave, her boyfriend tells her that he seems to have found a shortcut that would save them at least an hour, and they can spend that time together. The two then start kissing. Blake had asked Carly's twin brother Nick Jones, a juvenile delinquent, to join them. Nick remarks that their parents refer to Carly as the good twin, while he is the evil twin. Nick has brought along Dalton Chapman, an obnoxious and immature buddy. On their way there, they pull up their car next to Paige and Blake, and it seems that Paige is having a wild, steamy hormone sandwich with him. One of their friends starts recording, and they start honking to get the couple's attention. Suddenly, Paige comes up and tells them that she had dropped her lip balm and that they weren't doing anything. When the night arrives, the gang chooses to camp in the field for the night. When they stop, Carly pulls Paige to one side and asks her whether she told Blake about the pregnancy. Paige responds that her periods have been late before, and she doesn't want to freak her boyfriend out as he was very excited about the game. She says that if she is sure, she will let Blake know. So the group starts to throw around a ball and it lands near Nick. Wade asks Nick to throw the ball at him, but Nick just flicks his cigarette on the ball, and when Wade comes to pick the ball, he picks it up and throws it to Blake. The two are about to get into a confrontation, but Carly steps in to stop them and then asks her brother about what is wrong. Nick tells Carly that he is angry with her because she told him to the cops, but Carly tells him that she didn't do anything like that and Nick should start accepting responsibility for his actions. Later that night, as the group mess around with each other, an unknown guy in a vehicle pulls up to the campsite and shines his lights on it, refusing to leave, communicate, or turn off his lights. The group starts shouting at the man to turn off his light, but still, there is no response. Suddenly, Nick breaks the truck's headlight by hurling a beer bottle at the vehicle. This makes the man leave, but Carly tells off Nick for reacting that way. Later that night, while everyone is asleep, someone with a camera enters the campsite and starts recording the group. When that individual reaches Carly's camp, she is woken by a sound. She tries to wake Nick to tell him that she heard something, but he doesn't get up. So she gets out of the camp and starts looking around to see if someone is there. But Wade comes after her and tells her that she needs to come back to bed. The next morning begins with a frenzy as Blake frantically attempts to persuade the gang to leave for the game right away. However, Wade discovers his 15-inch fan belt has been cut and tampered with as he inspects his vehicle. Blake offers that they can all travel in his car to a nearby town and pick up a fan belt. Wade, on the other hand, despises the idea that the perpetrator was the man from the truck that stopped by last night. During the hubbub, Carly and Paige head into the woods to find the source of the odor. Carly slips and falls into a roadkill pit, which was the source of most of the foul odor from the night before. She seems to see a human hand protruding from the pit. A redneck comes and begins dropping dead deer into the hole as they assist Carly up. The group asks the redneck to see what it is. The man starts pulling at hand, and it turns out it was just a fake hand. They then ask the redneck if he knows about a gas station nearby, and he says that a man named Bo might have something they need. So he gives Wade a ride to the neighboring gas station in the fictitious town of Ambrose, where the local gas station employee could have one. Carly tags along, and the two end up as passengers in Lester Sinclair's truck. They eventually decide to leave the redneck behind as he begins to creep them out and decide to walk the rest of the way. Meanwhile, Paige, Blake, Nick, and Dalton are delayed in traffic congestion on their way to the game, causing them to miss the game entirely. As a result, the group returns to the campsite. Meanwhile, when Carly and Wade arrive in Ambrose, they search for a gas station and an attendant who does not appear to be at his store. They manage to track him to a church where a funeral is being held, 
Wade and Carly then go on a tour around town when they come across the House of Wax Museum. They discover terrifyingly accurate wax representations of individuals within who do not appear to be celebrities like typical sculptures. At that moment, Carly notices a strange man outside the glass observing them as they continue to explore the wax museum. Wade leaves Carly inside to explore, but she quickly panics after running across a disfigured maid dummy and drags Wade back to the gas station. They are reintroduced to Bo, whom they met in the church at the petrol station. Bo informs them that while the petrol station does not have any 15-inch fan belts, he does have some at his home. When they arrive at Bo's house, he gives Wade and Carly a lift back to their camping spot. Wade goes to use the restroom and then proceeds to investigate the house, where he discovers a strange medical room. Carly waits inside Bo's truck, but soon emerges, nervously anticipating his arrival. While she waits, she realizes one of the truck's headlights is missing. Meanwhile, Wade starts to look around the medical room. The lights inside the room suddenly go out, and the door to the bathroom is locked. Wade calls out for help, but there is no response. Suddenly, Vincent Sinclair appears and snips Wade's Achilles tendon with scissors. Wade is then stabbed in the chest for the second time. After that, he receives a kick to the face, which knocks him out. Back at the track, Carly is still pondering over her discovery when she sees Bo getting out of the house. He gets out and starts walking towards the truck. Seeing this, she quickly locks herself in the truck and tells Bo that she knows he was the man from last night. Hearing this, Bo breaks the window of the truck and a chase ensues. Meanwhile, back at camp, Blake dispatches Nick and Dalton to get Carly and Wade as he and Paige have a wild, steamy hormone sandwich. The film then shows a shot of Wade as he is carried into an underground chamber by the strange man who strips him naked. The weirdo then injects numbing medication into his body. The stranger's injuries are sewn up from their time in the bathroom. Waxing is used to remove brows and facial hair. After that, he is tied to a chair and pumped with hot wax, which burns his skin. Carly dashes to the nearest church in hopes of receiving assistance. Interestingly, all of the people she saw earlier at the burial were wax figures. She finds a tape recording of the burial and a folder addressed to the name Trudy Sinclair as she looks about. She breaks the arm off a wax figurine while leaning on it, revealing flesh and bones inside. Bo manages to track her down at the chapel and starts looking for her. He finds her and pulls her to a petrol station where he binds her to a chair and seals her lips shut. Meanwhile, Bo's brother Vincent begins the wax embalming of Wade. Nick and Dalton arrive in Ambrose shortly after to hunt for their pals, and when they run across Bo, Nick asks if he's seen Carly or Wade. When Carly hears Nick's voice, she rips her lips apart and screams for aid. Nick goes to the rescue and frees Carly by knocking Bo down. The twins learn that the remainder of Ambrose's population is dead, wax preserved, and on display to give the impression that the town is alive. Dalton answers the house of wax at the same moment and discovers Wade coated in wax. Wade is still alive, but he can't move. By removing the wax, Dalton tries to liberate Wade. As he does so, he notices that he is removing Wade's skin from his face. Vincent locates Dalton and begins pursuing him, slashing a portion of Wade's face off in the process, causing him to pass out from shock. Vincent decapitates Dalton after he falls down the stairs. Carly then notifies Nick of the predicament with the wax people. Paige strip dances Blake at the campsite, but their background music is unexpectedly cut off. When Blake attempts to turn it back on, he notices a missed call on his phone. He picks up the phone and hears Carly's voice from earlier regarding the man in the truck before hearing a window break. After killing Dalton, Vincent goes back to the campsite. He infiltrates Paige's room and assaults her. Paige manages to break out from the tent, only to slip and discover Blake choking on his own blood, a knife in the back of his neck. Vincent kicks the knife farther into Blake's neck, killing him. Paige continues to escape. Paige then dashes to a nearby massive metal warehouse, but once inside and hidden, Vincent enters and turns on the lights. Paige then dashes upstairs and grabs a metal pole's pointy end. She gets stabbed in the heel a few seconds later and then hops into an open blue automobile hiding in the back seat. Vincent gets stabbed in the face as soon as he opens the door of the car. Paige abandons the pole in her car, then flees behind another vehicle. Vincent takes the pole and tosses it towards Paige, who gets speared in the head by the pole, which then pushes out the back of her head as she looks up at the vehicle window. Vincent then removes the pole and records it on tape. Back in Ambrose, Carly and Nick overhear a chat between Bo and Vincent, the Sinclair children seen in 1974. Vincent simply wanted to continue his mother's work of creating wax figures, but Bo manipulated him into killing people in order to create more realistic wax figures out of their victims. 
Carly also discovers newspaper clippings detailing how Dr. Victor Sinclair's Siamese twin boys were separated at birth, leaving one severely deformed. They find themselves at the Wax Museum after being pursued by Bo and Vincent once more. Nick ignites a fire in the Wax home, which causes the entire structure to melt. Bo's skull is bashed with a bat by Carly, and the deranged brothers die in the fire. Vincent gets focused on killing Carly after witnessing Bo's lifeless body, despite her attempts to explain to him about his family's history of corruption. Carly stabs Vincent, and Nick pushes him through the wax floor to his death, where he lands on his brother's body at the exact spot where they were both conjoined. Carly and Nick then dig their way out through the second-story wall to safety. The smoke from the fire ultimately attracts outside assistance. The twins learn that the town has been abandoned for a long time and is no longer visible on any map. The sheriff discovers that there were actually three Sinclair children as the ambulance transports Carly and Nick away. The video concludes with the sight of the roadkill transporter patting Bo and Vincent's dog and waving to Carly and Nick as their ambulance departs Ambrose, prompting the spectator to wonder if the seemingly harmless man is one of the Sinclair brothers. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.